This is probably gonna sound stupid, but what if Barry Bonds had played without a bat? That sounded as stupid as I thought it would. I'm serious though, what if Barry Bonds went up to the batter's box empty-handed every time and just stood there until he was walked, struck out, or hit by a pitch? I wanted to know, so I simulated every plate appearance of his 2004 season as though he didn't have a bat. And it turns out that without a baseball bat, Barry Bonds would still be really, really good. Hey, could so hey, could someone get the lights? Thank you. Barry Bonds was one of the best baseball players who has ever lived. What was his secret? Nobody knows. If you think you know, please go to the comments below and get into a huge fight. Before we get to our experiment, let's examine how good he was with a bat. What you're looking at is the entire history of Major League Hitting. There are more than 17,000 dots on this timeline, and they represent the OPS of every full season a hitter ever had. OPS is a great stat. If your OPS is high, it means you get on base a lot, you hit for extra bases a lot, and you probably hit a lot of home runs. If your OPS is 1000, you might win the MVP award, but if your OPS is 1250, you might be the greatest hitter ever to walk the earth. As you can see, no hitter ever made it that high for the first 50 years or so of Major League Baseball, and then Babe Ruth came along and did it six times in an eight year span. He was the only man ever to get to 1250 until 1941 when the great Ted Williams hit 1287. Then he went off to war, came back, and managed to do it again, and for decades after that, despite the best efforts of Hank Aaron, Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, nobody even came close. Even in the power mad 1990s, nobody could quite get there. And then, for the first time in nearly half a century, four players broke the 1250 barrier. Their names were Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, and Barry Bonds. In four consecutive years, Bonds put together the fourth best, second best, eighth best, and best season in the history of baseball. This history was written by thousands of players over the course of 130 years, and one man laid waste to all of it as though it was nothing. You might think this is mostly a function of the era he played in. Okay, well, here's Barry Bonds OPS in 2004, and there's the second best that year by Todd Helton, and there's Craig Council's, the worst. The difference between Bonds and number two is almost as great as the difference between number two and number 161. It's like he almost lapped him. Barry Bonds broke baseball. Look at this, in 2001 he hit a major league record 73 home runs, but in 2004 his OPS was better despite hitting far fewer home runs. Turns out there's only one thing more powerful than home run ability, fear. The rest of baseball was scared of him. In 2004, opposing pitchers walked Bonds 232 times, an all-time record that is probably unbreakable. 120 of those times, the pitcher did the work for him by walking him intentionally. This is another unbreakable record, because even if you look at the all-time top 10 intentional walkers, his total doubles or triples the rest of the field, including guys like Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, and Barry Bonds. The ultimate sign of fear and respect is to walk a man with the bases loaded, as Greg Olson did to Barry Bonds in 1998. Now second to that would be walking a guy with the bases empty. The worst that's going to happen is a solo home run. Are you really that scared? It happens, but it's rare. Since 1930, it's happened 165 times in all of Major League Baseball, so about twice a year. Here's a very brief history of the bases empty intentional walk. For a long time, it almost never happened, and then it started happening way more. Those chunks in orange are all the bases empty intentional walks issued to Barry Bonds. Look at 2004. They issued 19 intentional bases empty walks in Major League Baseball and they were all to Barry Bonds. This isn't just a bunch of bars and numbers you're looking at. This is fear. Fear was his bat. He didn't need a bat. Let's take his bat away. Okay, so this is the nature of our experiment. Barry Bonds travels through a wormhole back to 2004 and relives each one of his 617 plate appearances without a baseball bat. He just stands in the batter's box and whatever happens, happens. Maybe he gets struck out, maybe he gets hit by a pitch, maybe he draws a walk. So he just gets struck out every time, right? Well, here's the kicker. The pitchers don't know he doesn't have a bat. They throw him the exact same pitches they otherwise would have. So let's see how often Bonds gets on base. Let's find exactly how far one man can get through nothing but reputation and fear. For this experiment, we need to get all the data we can get our hands on. 
I was originally hoping to use PitchFX, a computerized pitch tracking system, but unfortunately it wasn't introduced till 2006, just a little bit too late. Thank God for RetroSheet, which is probably the most comprehensive historical archive of any sport that exists anywhere. Decades of exhaustive research have produced pitch-by-pitch -pitch data of a countless number of games, including every game Barry Bonds played in 2004. RetroSheet tells us every single pitch, every ball, every called strike, every swinging strike, everything. This is a goldmine. Let's start with the plate appearances we don't have to experiment with at all. Barry Bonds made 617 plate appearances, and in 191 of them he never swung his bat. About those 191, in two of them he struck out looking, five of them ended when he got hit by the pitch, 67 were walks, and 117 more were intentional walks. So in real life, when Barry Bonds didn't swing the bat, his on-base percentage was 990. Now, to suggest this rate would stretch across an entire season wouldn't be very honest, because there was a reason Barry Bonds, who had tremendous plate discipline, didn't swing at these. They were bad pitches to hit. Pitchers were scared of him all season, but not that scared. No, we need to take the long road with this one. Let's see what you got, Barry. I've got all 617 plate appearances loaded up and divided into three categories. Walks are hit by pitches, strikeouts, and plate appearances that ended with a ball hit into play. First let's knock out the easy ones, the walks or the hit by pitches. This is the pitch by pitch notation we found on RetroSheet. You can tell that these are the nine hit by pitches because they all end with the letter H. Uh, below this we've got a ton of intentional walks. Most of them have four I's, each of which stands for an intentional ball. but these are funnier to me. Look at this one. B-F-B-B-I. So basically this means that the pitcher threw him an unintentional ball and then Bonds fouled one off and then he took balls two and three. So the count was three and one and the pitcher was just like, I'm good. So obviously if Bonds didn't have a bat for this plate appearance, he couldn't have possibly turned this into a strikeout. The same should go for all of these, right? Bat or not, the walks would stand as called, right? Well, that's almost always true. Some require further analysis, like this one, CBCBBFB. That means there was a called strike, ball one, another called strike, ball two, ball three, and then, on full count, a foul. Our Barry Bonds can't hit a foul ball because he doesn't have a bat, so what does he do? What do we do? We simulate it. What do we think that foul ball would have been if Barry didn't swing at it? Well, thanks to data I found on Fangraphs, if he swung at a pitch, there was an 80.9% chance it was somewhere inside the strike zone. That's quite a compliment to him, but it's kind of a drag for us because that means there's only a 19.1% chance this was a ball. So to reflect those odds, we generate a random number between 1 and 1,000. If the number we get is 191 or lower, it's a ball. Any other number is a strike. The odds are against us here, but we've got a shot. Full count. 191 or below, he walks. Oh, crab apples. Well, he struck out on this one. We had to take some other walks off the board, too. Of the 14 walks up for foul ball review, six ended up being simulated as strikeouts. So instead of his 232 real-life walks, Bonds now has 226 walks, plus nine hit by pitches for an on-base percentage of 381. Is that good? Yeah, it's actually really good. He's already in the 82nd percentile of all the eligible seasons in baseball history. Of course, it's nowhere near the 609 he managed in real life with a baseball bat, but it's still good enough for 27th in baseball that year, right between Yvonne Rodriguez and Sean Casey. But of course, we're not done counting yet. I ran each of Bond's 41 strikeouts through the same simulation just to see if we can get any of them to flip. And just as before, all the pitches in white are real-life pitches that remain unchanged in our simulation, and the orange pitches are the ones that have a 19% chance of being a ball. But for some of these, we needed more. Check out this one. Ball, ball, foul, foul, strike. In real life, that's a strikeout, but our Barry didn't swing at those, and one of them turned out to be a ball. The next pitch ends up being a strike that counts full, and we ran out of pitches. We have to make another pitch up. Now the good news here is that we don't have to use those odds we were using before because those are restricted to pitches Barry swung at. We get to dig out of the barrel of every pitch thrown his way, period. This can be any old pitch, and in total, 58.7 of all the pitches he saw were balls. So this time the math is a lot friendlier. Anything 587 or below is a ball, and anything above is a strike. So in this plate appearance, the better odds didn't really help us, but in total, we did manage to flip a few. We can add seven more walks to the total, which pushes Barry Bonds on base percentage to 392. 
Now he's in the 88th percentile, despite not having a bat. Pretty amazing. He now ranks 18th in 2004, right between Gary Sheffield and Vlad Guerrero. So you think we can get him here? Can Barry lead the league in on-base percentage without a bat? We have 335 plate appearances left to find out. You cannot have the best on days percentage in the history of baseball without a bat. Impossible. I must have done something wrong. I, I did all the calculations correct mathematically, but maybe my approach was wrong. Maybe, I mean, maybe that 58.7% chance of the random pitch being a ball, maybe that uh, is unfair for me to use somehow. I don't think I did anything wrong, but I look at the result. I think I'm full of crap. I think I'm, I have to be just like some idiot who's full of crap. Please show up in the comments and, and tell me how I'm full of crap because I genuinely want to know because I have to be, right? Because this is impossible. But what if I'm right? What if that was a fair simulation and we found that the best way to get on base for Barry Bonds was to not do anything? What does that say about baseball? Nothing good. <laughs>